Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Christelle Martinet. I just wanted to tell you that for the next minute or so, you're going to watch a very fast version of how I prepared this pick a card reading this time. You'll see option one, option number two, and option number three. And then we'll start the different readings. So get ready, on your mark, Get set, go. What you just saw, ladies and gentlemen, was a sped up version of the preparation of my bags and the choices for this pick a card session and reading. So let me show you those bags one at a time and I'll describe them. The first bag that we have is, is distinguished by this gray material that's very soft, very soft. All of these bags were fabricated by my mother, were sewn by her, and I've kept them throughout the years. Inside are all our goodies. It's a one-sided drawstring here to the side. And what are in these three bags that I will be showing you? First of all, there is one larger crystal and two smaller gems. There is the Star Child Oracle that you have seen me with before and a deck of tarot cards and two other oracle cards. There's the Vera Sibilla oracle cards that you have seen before and the, another oracle deck which is also Italian, the Destiny cards. So what makes this bag different from the rest? The other two are this blue gray soft material and a necklace. Each is distinguished by a necklace. What is this necklace about? This is a handmade, they're all handmade necklaces, white, black, red, and gray. It was made by a macrame artist, a woman who works for me. She creates many of the things that I have to sell. And apart from the cords, there is reptile skin here, which is an ancient symbol of royalty and keeping negative energy away. Also, the stones here that you see are Murano glass from Murano in the Venetian area, handcrafted. They are 
round beads and flat round bleed beads as well and this reptile skins are also draped around the string here the cords the macrame cords and this is our first bag our second bag is also quite interesting like i said it is a bag that my mother has made for me with a drawstring on two sides blue green fabric with flowers on them and what distinguishes this from the rest is this necklace that has a story all its own this is a necklace that a very old friend of mine gave me in high school I must have been around 15 years old many, many moons ago. Marietta, if you are watching, I always think of you. I see her every year. And um, she's my best friend, really, in the States. And um, it is made of clay. These are doves, clay, and wooden beads that you can see. It was from California. And Marietta, I have to say, is the person who truly taught me how to give of my earthly possessions let's put it that and that is a great gift so let me go on to the third bag the third bag too oop a little bit of noise there there's the there are the gem side that make a little are heavy now this is a bag with a ziplock it is burgundy white pink with flowers and gray splashes and the necklace that distinguishes this bag is this fresh pearl necklace that was handmade it comes from turkey and um i was given this from my other best friend nelita if you're watching hello <laughs> the freshwater pearls with silver rings now freshwater um, pearls and pearls in general are uh, give the significance come with it uh, the significance of wisdom through experience but they also have a calming effect very much similar to the um, clay whereas the reptile skin tend to have a motivational uh, movement and exciting it, it excites us and uh, this pearl necklace the pearls also attract wealth and luck so in our choice making in our decision making process here i'll bring them all to the fore again once again number one with the cord necklace macrame necklace with reptile skin and murano glass beads the second with clay and wood beads from California from my friend Marietta when I was very young and the necklace freshwater pearls made in Turkey given my my friend Mar my friend Nelita now when we make our decision I'm going to touch these bags and I would like to invite you to take deep breaths for each bag. So first of all, I'll be asking you to count five on the uh, taking in air and blowing up at the count of five. So let's start for bag number one. Inhale at the count of five and exhale to the count of five. Number two, inhale to the count of five and exhale to the count of five. Bag three, inhale to the count of five and exhale to the count of five. Now let's go and start our reading with choice number one, picking of bag number one. 
So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. This is group number one. This is bag number one, door number one, pick number one, your card, however you would like to put it. Just to remind you, we have the black, white, red, and gray macrame necklace with the red Mur Muriano, Murano glass and the um, the, the, the serpent skin here. And let's see what's inside. To open it up, I will put the necklace in between here, the candles. And take a look at this bag. First of all, we have the runes that I will put here off to the right. Then the apophyllite. I'll put everything out on the table then show you. We have the star child cards, the oracle cards, the picture postcards, the Vera Sibilla cards, the Destiny Oracle cards, and the tarot cards, which are Ludi Lescott. That's the name of the tarot cards, Ludi Lescott. Then we have here the Garnet Stone and one more. Aventurine, Aventurine. Okay, let me start by showing you what is in the runes. These are onyx, black onyx runes, and onyx is a gem of um, of uh, that that favors well willpower and discipline, basically, and it also helps you to focus your attention. So we'll be using that last. Then we have here the Apophyllite and the Apophyllite. The Apophyllite is a stone of higher realm vibrations. It raises your vibrational state and this is a stone that you would like to keep near you. Let me see if I can give you a better view of that with the I'll keep one of the, there you go. I'll keep one of the candles underneath there. And the Aventurine, the Aventurine is a gem of vitality and growth. Um, you'd like to take the Apophyllite when you're feeling low. That should be kept as close as you can. So let's take a look at the Oracle, which will be our focus. So the theme of this reading is, will I be successful? Will I be successful? Will I be successful? Here we have the sacred mountain. Vision quest, clarity and truth. Shambhala, deep healing. It seems to focus on your journey. Will I be successful? And for you, it's all a matter of the journey. Let's take a look at the picture postcards. I'll mix them this way and then pull up one from the bottom, one for the top after I cut them. Top. Ah. This is interesting. The Bed by Lutu, uh, Toulouse Lautrec. It looks like two children, but it may not be. And from the bottom, oh, this is another one of my favorites. This is Rousseau, the portrait of Monsieur X. The portrait of Mr. X. Very grave, serious. Now, let me take another look at the tarot so you can see what is being what is emerging for you group number one group number one group number one as you saw these were all 
shuffled beforehand. I'll pull more if I need them. Let me show you those. I have here the seven of coins, the ten of wands, the three of wands, the star. The star will be doing some magic with this star as we will doing some mad be doing magic. We'll be expressing intentions with the emperor. And last but not least, the three of coins. Now, before we go on, let me take the opportunity now to work on these two major arcana, which are important. So first of all, we have to remember that um, the emperor, let's talk about the emperor first, the emperor brings about stability in life if we manifest and we um, express our intentions. So let's say, hear me, O great guardians of the tarot, hear me, O great guardians of the tarot. Harness us the power of this holy card so that we may have stability in our lives. So me, we may have stability in our lives. So mote it be. Now, this card is the star card. And take a look. Hear me, O great guardians of the tarot. Hear me, O great guardians of the tarot. Harness the power of this holy card. Harness us the power of this holy card so that we might develop faith in our lives. Now let's go on and show you, pull some more cards, Vivira Sibila, on a few of these. What emerges immediately here? ladies and gentlemen of group number one, it looks like there is a, a, a sort of dichotomy. There's a dichotomy of letting things go as they shall go and waiting for the universe to make things emerge and taking forceful energy in terms of our agency, in terms of what we want to do. There's a dichotomy here. There's two, two pronged energy. Now, our focus card talks about the sacred mountain. It's a quest. It's a journey. Now, a journey also implies agency, doing something. But I have to be reminded that we do something in our waking hour, hours when we go forward and we take decisions. But we also go forward in our sleeping hours when we travel to the astral planes. And we bring messages back to us about what is necessary for us to do. Apart from this, I'm seeing also that there is an amount of guidance here with this the star card and the intention of having faith in our lives and stability above all. We do have this wonderful three of wands, which talks of taking stock. And it is precisely in this where there's a new moon coming up in the period, coming up shortly. So uh, we can meditate on that new moon. And in moon cycles in general, you might bear witness. They might bear witness to the intentions that you have. So clarify them for yourselves. I do have this three of wands, like I said, the, uh, it takes stock of what you're doing, but this also is a companion to the three of coins. Now, the three of coins is a card that is starting to lay the basis for our spirituality. Then we reach the four and the five and things get uh, disgruntled, things get changed, things get shaken, but we're still in the area of the threes here. Now, 
the threes, you have a magic moment group number one where you can take this time and you can take stock. You can meditate on where you are spiritually. But I have to say what worries me most here is this ten of wands. I'm going to take a look at the ten of wands with the Sibylla cards to see what they can add to this. And also there's this seven of coins, this seven of coins. This is a card that generally would bring you to um, look back at what you have done and before you're before you start to embark on an agency route on an active route to change things let me take let me take these sibilas and pull three for that seven of coins and three for the ten of wands now, with the seven of coins, I have here a consoling surprise. There's a moment where you have the opportunity. You have the luxury, I dare say, I could call that a luxury in deciding how to go forward. This odd pref, the priest here, the sacerdote, is a, I don't want to say a negative presence, but it's a presence that seems to hide things from ourself. Look at their cloak. Hides things from ourselves. And what we tend to do in this type of energy format is look back. And that brings sentiments of nostalgia. Uh, nostalgia sorry. So if we are bent on looking toward the past, unfortunately, we have arriving the end of a very difficult cycle and saying it's unfortunate but we still have to get to that end if we can meditate these are two opposite ends of the spectrum on a brief moment that is a clearing in our energy uh, domain where we're feeling that we have we may have a choice we have two ways we can meditate on the past or we can uh, use the law of attraction to the future and manifest. Now, this is telling us, you know, remember we saw these two energies. There's a choice here for you. Now, with the three of um, wands, sorry, with the three of wands here, I have the uh, domestic, the merchant and the friend, the female friend. And what are they saying? These two both like the priest as well. They do keep you tending to business as usually, tending to yourself. But, and here comes the, uh, the real opportunity. The opportunity we have is that there could be harmony around the corner. There's harmony around the corner. If we're not able to only dwell on the past. I'm going to take a look at the destiny cards. The destiny cards. It's an Italian oracle. Okay, now I have to say we've got here uh, this is satisfaction. All right, we can say satisfaction. It's similar to the three of uh, cups in the tarot. We have an engagement and we have the friend again, Amika. Amika, she brings harmony. She brings harmony. Now, what am I thinking here? I'm thinking that the cards are suggesting you to not only take stock of what is, because you know that an engagement aims towards the future. What could that mean for people who are already in a partnership? This talks of another side to the relationship, another side, something that will, for example, if one of you are having a um, a difficult moment and you are you have to go through physio physiothera example physiotherapy and um what is interesting is if you engage the partner with you so that they might as well go through the motions literally to heal 
as a couple, you are both healing. There are some things that can be done together and the cards are inviting you to do this together with a partner. And for those of you who are not yet partnered and or have just be, met someone, this is an excellent moment for that. It really, really is. Harmony is going to be established in the realm of your emotional sphere. Now I'm going to take a look with the uh, Sibylla cards here over our Monsieur X here and take a look at what they're suggesting. Yes, okay. Now, there's a conflicting me uh, message here, but it's easily resolved. There is the lover, could be a male, could be a female. There is the jealousy card, which could mean a loss in some way, not necessarily jealousy, but there is the fortune card. Now, these are two cards that equal each other out. What do we get here then? We get that the focus of this reading for you, Monsieur X, which could be a male or could be a female, is to meditate which way you want to go with your partner, if you are partnered. Do you want to bring them side by side and walk along the path on your journey? Remember that sacred mountain. Or you can turn these cards around and you can separate yourself from them if need be. One other clue can be given by this um, card by Degas, this part portrait by Degas, which yields, let's see. Okay, we've got the thoughts. The lover, now this is another lover, I'll show you. And Viaggio the Trip. Here we have on opposite, opposite ends here, they're mirroring each other. The lover and the lover. They are, for all intents and purposes, looking at each other. And we have here thoughts, the lover, and movement. Now, movement means also, when we talk about energy and we talk about people putting curses on you, hoaxes, there are spells being made. Well, there, this underlying all of that energy and the energy work and magic and intentions is our, the way we use our thoughts. Now here, the key is this, you can use your thoughts to bring yourself together or to bring yourself apart. But the key here is for our success is clarity, clarity and truth that would imply communication. Let's take the, our runes and this is the onyx. Remember the onyx runes, we have seen them before in the past and they were, they're runes that are uh, uh, work for grounding very much so. Let's see, 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 let's see. I'll bring these out as they have been cast. Let's see, one by one. Okay, now, let me show you and let me read for you. We have the rune of Urus. Now, Urus here, probably over the candle, you can see, yes. Urus is a, uh, a rune of strength. It is Merc stave now, remember. It means usually Urus comes out like that. The rune is generally a rune of strength, of vital force and energy, which may be slightly lacking. You may be having to heal. And that was the cornerstone message of this reading. Um, and for men, it implies an overabundance of strong emotions coming to the fore, especially for men. It's a strong healing rune, even in this position. 
uh, upside down. This works towards helping you strengthen uh, your resolve and your emotion. It does call for more determination, for more agency, and that goes hand in hand with what we just saw. I do have here Manats. You can see that is Merkstay, if it's upside down. This is the rune of humankind of interdependence. Um, this talks about usually understanding that we are one. And in this position, it tells you that there are decisions that only you can make, but the communications needs to be interacted and acted with your partner. If you have a partner, there is a time for new plans. They're telling you, try to make and enact new plans. Here we have Lagas Lagus, and it is bright stave. Thank goodness, thank goodness, thank goodness. And Lagos is about intuitive knowledge, and this is about female energy, about the divine feminine. Um, this allows you, it fosters good memory, and it helps your memory, and it gives you, brings you success in learning. Will I be successful? Yes, I will be successful in learning, especially. I have here Keynotes, and it is Brightstave. Keynotes is a very interesting room. It's open. There's an open. You can see that it's open, bright stave. Um, Keynotes talks of a warm fire, of um, strength in your energy power. And although it may seem contradictory to Ur Urus, which was Merkstave, this widens the door for you, definitely. There is an opening up, and the more you open up, the more you're ready to start something new. Keynotes helps you with that. I have here Feihu Merkstave, and Feihu does talk about um, ga gaining something, either romantically or financially, and it depends on what's around it. And what I'm seeing around it is moral strength, and there is a renewal of moral strength for you in this period, and the success lies in that area as well. I have here Dieg, and Dieg is a rune of increase and growth, an increase. Um, and it there are no other, as far, yes, I do see a rune of delay, and I'll show you that. This is Hagal. This is Hagal, and right next to that, and Hagal implies delays, and we have Dieg that just removes those delays. So if you want to make that decision and go forward with your partner, it is a time now. I have here Isa. Isa literally is ice in the rune world. And um, it talks about freezing, cooling down in a relationship. Now, that may be the case. That may be the case. But we just had Dieg and Dieg does not foster slowing up. So this takes the precedent. The time is now, people, in the first um, bag choice here, the first group. If you need to make a move, do it now. I have here A Watts. A Watts is a very protective room, a very powerfully protective room. So again, if you're ready to take make the move, do it now. And last but not least, I have Yera. Yera is a harvest rune. It is right in the center of these runes, and it talks about karmic rewards for the efforts that you have made and will be making. For those of you who have any legal issues or are expecting a ruling, it does help in that case as well. It will work to the best of the universe, the best can um, help you the best possible solution for you in that ruling. Well, I hope this was of help, ladies and gentlemen. Um, group number one, I do hope that um, this was, it resonated you. Write to me under the video and let me know how much or how little and which part of the reading resonated to you, for you. Namaste, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going on to Door number two, group number two, bag number two. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, group number two. We have here 
the bag that I had shown you, remember the blue green bag with flowers and the clay and wood bead uh, necklace. I'm going to put the necklace over to the side, bring a candle here to the fore so it could help us see some of the things that need to be seen. We have Ludi Lescott Tarot. We have the Amethyst Stone. I'll talk about that in a moment. Our runes. Our runes, and I'll talk about those for a moment. In a moment, we have the Destiny Oracle cards, La Sibilla cards, Oracle cards, and the Star Seed Oracle cards. Picture postcards, fluoride, blue and violet fluoride. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And onyx, onyx. Now, first of all, first of all, I wanted to show you the runes, and those are onyx that. Sorry, <laughs> the runes are not onyx. This is onyx. It's, I guess it's calling my attention. This onyx is to favor willpower, discipline, and it helps focus our attention. It's a grounding rune, actually. That's a grounding stone. I'm getting confused here because I also have onyx runes. These are bone antler runes, and they bones and uh, represent the life-giving power of the sun. And so I'll put this off to the side. And then we have our fluorite that I did mention. I just showed you, but I didn't talk about it. It enhances mental clarity and it clears our energy fields. And of course, many of us know about amethyst. Amethyst is a gen of protection and it fosters, fosters divine a text, a ten, a connection. Sorry, It works mm, to keep at bay any form of um, addiction or alcoholism. This is an interesting stone for that. Now, let's get started. Let's get started with the Star Child Oracle. The question, the focusing question is, will I succeed? Am I going to succeed? Will I succeed? All right, from the top, two have come out, actually. Let's see, the first is a stepping stone. Stepping stones. Take the next step and let go of the old paradigm. That seems to be the key for our reading, but we shall see because this one also wanted to come out. Synchronicity. Look how beautiful this is. Synchronicities. Um, opportunities in divine timing open to change, divine outcomes. This is um, a message of being aware, being keeping our antennas up. And I'm putting them one on top of another. And now I have my uh, picture postcards. The picture postcards, I'll mix them up, shuffle them as best I can. Then I will cut them in half. Cut them in half. I'll divide the deck. Cut the deck. And take one from the top and one from the bottom. Okay. We have here um, an Impressionist. This is an Impressionist um, painting. Tuileries, Tuileries. And the interesting part of this painting is that you don't see which is the top and which is the bottom. It's an illusion. If we turn it around, we still don't understand if we're looking up or looking down. And this talks a lot about illusions, uh, depending on what day, time of day it is for us. Okay, this painting is called um, The Princess Shares Her Dinner with the Frog by Walter Crane. Um, now, the frog um, is, it's, you know, we try to think, well, 
the first thing you want to do is look at where's the frog? Where is the frog? Is there a frog? And um, of course, you know the fable, the frog prince. Before the prince became a frog, they needed the kiss of the princess. Well, the painting is talking about someone's presence there, but there doesn't seem to be welcome emotional anything between them. But anyway, let's go on. I have the tarot here. The tarot is Ludi Lascott, a very um, modern tarot, and it's so cool. That's the only word I could think about, think of to say. It's so um, interesting, and the way that they have, they give messages out, that's one. The way it gives messages are uh, is incredible, really. So this first came out is the Ten of Cups. Hurrah! Group number two. We are in for a ride. Then we have So the next card we have is the Four of Cups. Now this is a, a bit of an energy of being dejected. Let's take a look at what comes up. We've got the Page of swords. This is the page of swords. We have the fool card. The fool card. Now the fool card calls upon, it's a major arcana, calls upon us to um, meditate on that magically, we will, and to call upon us the energy of that fool card. This is the six of cups. How interesting. Let's see about that. The nine of cups. Well, what are our wishes, ladies and gentlemen? Let's see what the fool can bring to us. Now, um, hear me, O oh great guardians of the tarot. Hear me, O oh great guardians of the tarot. Harness us the power of this holy card so that we may start a new beginning. Harness the power of this holy card so that we may start a new beginning so mote it be now this is really a well wish for the entire group are we going to be successful we have an opportunity here we have uh, more than one opportunity we've got the um uh, the fool card we've got the nine of cups we do have a, a six of cups and the six of cups to me in this spread is talking about the opportunity of a return to a moment that you were not as successful. And this is going to give you the opportunity to a start, start anew. There's synchronicity here. Remember that card that just flew out with the first card. And uh, there is an opportunity here of divine timing. Um, it's a moment to be open to change and to outcomes that will favor your success. Let me uh, go on now. I'm going to take the Virasibila and just take a look at what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking at here part of us, you know, I mean, not the group, not the entire group part, some of us. No, I mean, there is a part of each and every one of us. There is a part of each and every one of us that... Um, that sees murky waters, that is looking at key waters, as if you're starting to dance with your shadow. And that is the key to change, is that dance, that sacred dance, when we start to dance with the shadow, is when we learn. And here we have the ability to learn and get out of an old paradigm. Um, however, this murkiness that's represented by these two picture postcards, the fine arts painting here, the murkiness is that you're not, we are not distinguishing entirely between what it means for us to serve on this earth through our work and activity, what it means to serve on this work, the world through the love that we bestow to others. And there seems to be a dichotomy in terms of I don't know if these two ends could meet. I don't know if 
if I'm giving too little here, too much there, is it possible to do all together? Do we have to have a family business in order for things to go both in the same direction? These are things that keep coming up and coming up and coming up. And you, you know, there's a tendency here in this frame, time frame of us to go set, uh, uh, spells too thin. But if I remind you, the first tarot card was the 10 of cups. The last was the nine of cups. We're talking about a dream come true here. The difficult moment is to know what you want, to know exactly what you want, because the universe works in odd ways and our dreams do come true, but not exactly the way we intended it to. So the reading here seems to be inviting us from the second group to be very, very specific and careful. Otherwise, we will be in a very sad state. And um, what can lend us, what can um, help us, aid us to get to that success is this page of swords. The page of swords is a very swift page, but it's a, it's a page that is somewhat playful and it, um, it helps us have the, um, the truth emerge. It helps us to have the truth emerge either from you or the other party, but in a way that's playful. This is the way I'm looking at it with this ability to start anew and have a new beginning. Um, there is, remember, the Six of, of um, Cups now. And the Six of Cups, usually in tarot readings, does talk about a return. I'm not seeing this as a return for a person, but just in case, let me take three Sibylas on that, just in case... Well, it does talk about messages. There we go. Okay, we have Donato. This is the safe. This is a relationship that was a past relationship. Message. These are the messages, and these are messages coming back. You will be hearing from a former uh, you were involved with, either romantically or financially, be coming up. Usually, the cups do talk emotions, but we our emotions are also spent when we put our heart into a and um, a financial endeavor, an economic endeavor. I'm going to take the Sibylla here now on the Tuileries here. And under, from under, on the frog. Okay, now, definitely clarity is coming. Definitely clarity will be emerging. And why I see this a bright future aiming precisely uh, straight at the heart of a person who's a very important person. This could be a, an important man who, for you in your life, both emotionally, energetically, or economically, and uh, or a female in your life emotionally, economically, or energetically. But here we talk of happiness in the heart. Regardless of the domain, There, it does bring happiness. Very interesting. So clarity is going to come to the fore. Um, I will take a few more cards here on that, um, and I'll use the destiny cards. I'll use the destiny cards on the, the four of cups, this sensation of being de dejected. There we go. Yeah, okay. You know how they speak sometimes? It's a wonder. Um, faith, good faith, good faith. Uh, we have the impossibility card and uh, the earnings. Now, look, it seems to me that the progression of these cards talks about you being wary of someone, not being able to totally espouse their eye or espouse their feelings. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at someone in your business realm, someone who works with you or works for you, and that may require you to let go of the old paradigm in order for you to have success in interacting with this person, who's also a person who um, 
is it lends themselves to your specific success, not only theirs. Uh, quite interesting. I'm going to take a few more destiny cards. A few more destiny cards and take a look at the knight here of swords. Mm. Okay, we have it. Okay, we've the fortune card. We've got the clarification card and we have envy. Now, look, the question was that drove the, the reading was, will I be successful? Am I going to be successful? Yes, it does speak to success, but a sort of, you know, the expression, a left-handed compliment when some success comes, but it brings with us, it brings with it other more, um, other different um, notions, ideas, issues that may crop up. There is a clarification with the success, but that clarification instills for some reason a negative a sort of energy involving someone else. I'm going to take a row over that another tarot from under the deck. And I have here the, how interesting, the Empress. I'm going to meditate on her for, and do some call on her as a card that will work her magic. Hear me, great guardians of the tarot. Harness me, us, harness our of this holy card so that we might bring it though so that it might bring us abundance hear me O oh great guardians of the tarot harness us the power of this holy card so that we may so that we may have abundance through the empress now what i'm looking at is um, a situation where abundance does come and for some reason it brings you to a position where you are required to ask. You ask, and we have asked. Let me put that down now and go to the runes and see what they can. I'm going to cast them in the basket. And let's, ah, there it is. And let's see how they have fallen. Okay. Now, what is this? Oh, great, great. All right, we have this rune of called need. And the rune need usually is a rune of patience because it does talk about a delay. And this may be the difficulty involved with the uh, abundance that comes your way, with the fortune, actually fortune, that comes your way. Uh, need also talks about constraint to some degree, um, a difficult learning situation. But I don't see here failure, and I'll let you know why. In I'm going to go through the more uh, spiny runes first. In the middle there is um, Hagal, Hagalas, and it is uh, also talks about delays, that the time is not right. There are forces out of your control. But having said that, with these two runes, let me just go around and show you the rest. And I'll, let's go to the last one that is is a spiny and, and thorny is the resats. It's um, a rune of protection and luck. And actually fire. There is a passionate pull to this uh, rune and it comes down so strongly. So in terms of the delay, fear, it is coming. That um, success is coming. Those, um, the, the, the actual fortune is coming. Now I have here Lagas, a Lagus, and this is intuitive knowledge. This is a female energy, the divine feminine energy. This is in um, your um, memory. It's good to enhance your memory and bringing you success in learning from things that are in this period. 
Here's the rune Anzus, as you can see, it's Merkstave, and it talks about communication and wisdom here. Um, it, the communication is delayed because in partnership with the other two runes of delay, this also talks of delay because it's Merkstave. Now I have two other runes. One is, um, one is a Watts, which is a, um, a powerful ally. It's a protective rune. It's as if the, the rune is telling you, look, the universe has your back. So just don't sweat the small stuff. And the last but not least here is Gifu. Now, Gifu is a rune that is, uh, it's actually a gift. It means gift. It means a partnership. There's a, an important um, development in a, in a, an either a romantic partnership or a business partnership. What can I say? It looks like it's pointing to positivity, even though there are elements of the reading that talk of a delay. I think there's enough protection here for you, members of group number two, to know that the universe is um, protecting you and has your back. So just don't sweat the small stuff. It was a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, for me to offer this reading for group number two. Write down below and tell me how it resonated, what parts resonated for you, what others different. That would be helpful. And until we read together again. Now off to group number three. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, for the bag, the last bag, bag number three which was this gray burgundy pink bag with a zip closing and the freshwater pearls and silver. So I'll put the pearls over candles off to, the, to my left and let's take a look what's in this. Here we have the runes. And we have, there you have it, jade runes, jade runes. And this is excellent. Jade is excellent for health and abundance. So the question is, oh, we have malachite. Let me put all of these out first. We have malachite. This is, let me show you the malachite first. Yeah, you could see the sparkles there. Malachite Azurite. The Malachite, this enhances intuit intuition and it rids us of blocks and restrictions. And it replaces them with feelings of compassion, of love. And then we have this Black Jasper. Black Jasper, it's used to heal a broken heart to heal a broken heart and it protects us from spells from curses and enhances our motivation in doing something so it looks like a common theme is arising here then we have another i believe there we are we have a moonstone and the moonstones are stones of mystery and self-discovery now let's pull out the cards here. I have the Oracle deck, the cards of destiny. Let's see the, uh, this is turned around. We have the, the uh, cards, the Ludi Lescott cards, tarot cards, Ludi Lescott. It's a very, this wants to come out and I'll keep it out. It is the Ace of Cups. I will put that out. It's a very modern deck, beautiful deck actually. Then we have here the Star Child, the Star Child Oracle deck that I'll be using first. Vivira Sibila. This goes here. Vira Sibila cards. I'll be using those as clarifiers. Oop. Let me pull things that keep 
falling. They keep falling, they keep falling, they keep falling away. That's, then we have the picture postcard selection that I use for readings at times. Let me start by mixing the Star Child Oracle and take a look at that as a focus. Here you go. I'm going to pull out, this has fallen out, and I will look at the top. Okay, crown, the crown. You have the right to know, go beyond attachments, and divine attachment. Your goal should be divine attachment. This is the crown. Let me put this at the top here and take up the fine arts. We have that ace of cups. I'll put that over to the top. Let me mix these and then cut them and then choose one from the top and one from the bottom. top and the oops well <laughs> pull that out so I'll take three here we are so what do we have we have some a lot of water actually this is the starry night Mississippi Queen by um, Ryan Lee Waldron it's an impressionist work then these two have come out together one is Expectations. There is water in the background. Expectations by Sir Lawrence Alma Tadema. And the last is this uh, fiery scene, the destruction of the Danish fleet before Copenhagen, in front of Copenhagen. This is Christopher Eckerberg, Eckersberg. Wow, we've got a lot of emotional, this just having flown out, really is what is conditioning our uh, reading here. Let me take a look now at the tarot. Interesting, interesting move. You know, I get an impression here there's a lot of, um, apart from, there isn't a lot of, there are a lot of emotions. This is true. But the emotions are moving you. When we talk about being successful, it seems that your emotions are in play. They have much to do. Um, starting from this broken heart, we're healing from with the black jasper and the malachite azurite. It aids us in blocks to uncover these blocks and restrictions and moving from a position of love. But you see, it's um, interesting that this came out first, the crown, the right to know, to go beyond attachments. And when we talk of blocks and restrictions, that is part of the attachments. Let's see what these, these tarot cards can add. Let's see what, what they add to the reading where the question is, will I be successful? I'll take one from the top one from the bottom, one from the top, one from the bottom, one from the top, and two have come out. All right, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So you remember that the Ace of Cups flew out of the deck. Then we have the Five of Wands, the Five of Wands. These are some regrets. Let's see, the Two of Cups. I tell you, there is something highly emotional here. There's the four of coins as well. This is, this is the hanged man, ladies and gentlemen, quite different from the hanged man in traditional tarot decks. And I'm going to meditate on this major arcana and work my magic on that. Then we have the knight of coins elegant lovely and the ace of wands so that makes the incoming card an ace of cups the outgoing card the ace of wands now with the hanged man hear me O great guardians of the tarot hear me O great guardians of the tarot 
Harness us the power of this holy card so that we may overcome trauma. Harness us the power of this holy card so that we may overcome trauma. So mote it be. Now, having said that, I have to again return to the issue of the multitude. Oh, there's so much water. There is, apart from the picture postcards, water here. I have the ace, the um, the two of cups as well, water. But there is this troublesome card that I would say, this five of wands that I tend to think may be regrets. Let me take a look with the Vira Sibila here. Yes, yes, this is something being held in. This is definitely being held in. We have the military, we have the prison, and we have the disgrace, this house on fire. This is something to do with the relationship, ladies and gentlemen, of the third group. That is the issue of delicacy that is um, is being pointed out uh, over and over again in this reading. And let's take a look, continuing around the reading, around the spread, to see what it is. Because if that is the bone of contention, if that is definitely the issue here, let me take a look at this Two of Cups. Okay, yes, it is, actually. All right, we have this room, the room where communication, intimate communication takes place. And um, there is a change for the negative with this thief. And however, uh, this young lady does talk about virgin territories, ter virgin territory. So it means to me, ladies and gentlemen of this third group, that any issues that are difficult uh, in this period for you concerning a romantic partnership or a partnership in general, I'm it has to do with emotions, so if it is a partnership in crime, on the job, there is a highly emotional factor involved, emotional issues involved. They will be stabilized. They will be stabilized in this period. Look towards the new moon coming up. Now, I'm looking at also this four of coins. The four of coins does talk of coming, rising from your ashes. This is the way I read it. I don't use the traditional rider weight. Me, I do see you rising, us rising from our ashes if there is a difficult emotional issue at stake. The other person, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is look at the hanged man and the four of coins together, taking them from the bottom of this deck. And I'm seeing, sighing, finally something is coming in. And there's water again. We have this great consolation. So that does, it is renewed. Both of you, both partners in either in a relationship or in a, a business relationship come out ahead. But it is not, here is the doctor, it is not without its consequences. The hurts, the wounds are there, and you will feel it for some time. I'm going to take these destiny cards, these oracle decks on this deck, over the card, the knight of coins. Let me take a look at that. Because there's static, there's an, a certain amount of static um, static activity here, you know, there's the status quo, but there is also a yearning. What I'm reading, what is coming out is that there is a yearning of sorts emanating from the reading. Let's see if we can highlight both the Ace of Wands and the Knight of Coins. Yes, look, we've got this Knight of Coins. We've got the loved one, a man in love, a woman in love, the person in love. And uh, your partner, you you yourself may be an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn, or you may be involved with a, an earth sign here. There is a messenger. 
there is a messenger and victory. Hey, hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. So it takes time. There's a time factor here that is involved. It seems that there's sort of a negotiation, a, a negotiation, a negotiation, <laughs> emotion, negotiation. There's a negotiation process that needs to come about in order for you to stand tall in this two by two by two, this, this sort of relationship. I'm going to, and again, it's not only a romantic life, a relationship. This can also be a, um, power relationship, a um, professional relationship. Now I'm looking at that Ace of Wands, the outgoing Ace, the outgoing Ace. And what do we have here? We've got the protection, the person who gives protection, illness, and the barrister, the man, the professional, the uh, lawyer, counselman, counselor. Look, it looks like to me that you both, many of you may be going into counseling, okay, but I see this as legal, uh, a legal issue. If you were about to entertain a legal separation, that is going to uh, move three steps back, I have to say, because the ill feelings of course, we do have victory here, but the ill feelings, as I said, keep wounds and wounds will be in place. It looks like to me, am I going to be successful? I'm going to be successful in making the distinction between myself, ladies and gentlemen of this group, myself and them, myself and he or she. I'm going to take these runes and see how that crowns the reading and helps us. These jade runes that should help us with abundance. I'm going, there's a, a flying rune. Oop, a flying rune. A flying rune. A flying rune. And I will put it in there. Okay, now I'll put them out as just the way they came out and fall in the, in the, here you go. Aha, uh -huh. we've got, there you go. Very, very small. I get it. I get it. We are on a roll here in this third group. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay, there is a time factor indeed. Um, I'll talk about that right away. This is Hagal Hagalas. Hagal Hagalas that talks of limitations, delays out of your control, and that's here. Now, I do have um, the um, Algids, Algids Merkstave. This is uh, upside down. And what does it talk about? Algids usually is a very fortunate influence in your life, a very fortunate new influence in your life. Although it remains a protective rune, Stave, this influence, because I also have the rune Yera here. Where are you, Yera? That is right here you go. Because I have the rune Yera, Yera beats time as well. And that causes a delay, but Yera here talks about rewards for your efforts. Even uh, legal sentences and rulings in your favor. It's like I said, I do see something that hatched up and is made amends. I have here Keynotes. Keynotes is is Merck's Dave, unfortunately, but it does mess us as still. And there is opening up. There is the start of something new. It's not as warm as it is when it's bright stave, but nonetheless, it comes in. Here I have Isa now. From the warmth that was not there, I have Isa, which literally means ice. It means a freeze. It means a cooling down. It means a wait. There's something that you have to wait for. Remember, there are message coming in, however, we did see that. And the room of uh, the, the 
Sibylla cards called Stan Stanza, which is the room of intimate communication. Here we have A Watts. A Watts is the yew tree. It's a very powerful rune of protection. I do see a lot of protection here. And three runes, including this rune need that talks of a delay. Now, um, I believe that we can take that for face value. There will be a delay. I do have here a few more runes, Thurisats. Now, Thurisats is protection. Once again, this is the fourth rune of protection and luck, especially with um, the, the rune Awats. There you go. And here we have it. Now, we have here, let me see if I've covered all of them. Yeah, we have here Rido. Now, it is interesting to end on uh, the rune of Rido because it is a wagon. It's a journeying room. Now, like I said, there needs to be negotiation. Well, Rido is the rune of negotiation. This is the time that you need to negotiate. And this may be at the bottom of our delay because a lot of talk, I see a lot of communication for us in the third group here before something starts to open up. But then there is the start of something new. This is the second rune that talks about something new starting. I do hope this was of help, ladies and gentlemen, from this third group. Write to me below in the, in the, um, below my video and tell me how this resonated with you if certain parts did and others did not and what you gathered from this. I will be back with another next week. Namaste. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye.